Um, today is hopefully the first of a series of, uh, of sessions we'll do about building your own interactive DSL. A DSL is a domain specific language. You might have used one when um, working with um, um, languages like MATLAB or GNUplot or some other scripting um, language that you're familiar with. And one of the main components of this tutorial is going to be uh, is going to be the fact that we're, we'll try and um, make these uh, domain specific language interactive, which is uh, which is um, which makes it a bit more interesting because it's it's going to be not just about defining an interpreter for a language, but also about letting the user run instructions uh, of the languages one after the other, getting some feedback about how the execution is going and uh, possibly even changing um, the, the runtime uh, in an interactive fashion. The main components we're gonna be, we're gonna be looking into are a command line interface, a REPL, a runtime to run our, uh, our uh, application, a parser and an interpreter. And we'll spend some time on each one of these boxes, but today we'll focus on um, one of the most general purpose uh, parts of the uh, of the sessions, which is uh, defining a REPL. Now, in case you're not familiar with what a REPL is, you can probably just um, rely on the Wikipedia definition of, uh, of that. And REPL stands for Read, Eval, Print, Loop. You'll see where the loop come into, uh, come into play. Uh, but the idea is it's a mechanism to read the user input, evaluate it thanks to some sort of parser and, and interpreter, which is something we'll do. We look into and then print and print some sort of feedback for the user to understand how the evaluation went. And we do that in a loop, meaning uh, we provide the user with a prompt and let them enter a sequence of instructions and provide them with feedback um, one after the other. So going back to our presentation, uh, the first we, we had, a, we have, I defined a set of requirements for a REPL. These are uh, quite general purpose. So if you go up one slide, we'll go back for a second. The arrows here represent the dependencies between different components. And you can notice how the REPL doesn't depend on anything, which means that what we'll define in this session, you can actually reuse for whatever application or language or, or uh, shell definition you, you want. So as I was mentioning, I defined a set of uh, requirements. And the great news is because we're, we are relying on uh, Crystal to, to build this uh, uh, interactive uh, DSL, the great uh, news is we don't have to start everything pr from scratch. There's a, a pretty great library um, that I stumbled upon a few weeks ago that is called FancyLine. And FancyLine is a library that makes it extremely easy uh, for us to define a, a shell, a very general shell with a few built-in func pieces of functionality like the behavior of uh, different uh, arrow keys and so on that you will find very convenient, I'm sure. So the first thing we need to do is we go to the shard YAML file, which is the, the manifest of our project, and we'll just add the dependencies, uh, add fancy line as a dependency. Whenever you do that, remember to run shard install so that the dependency is actually added to your project. And now that we have fancy line in uh, the namespace, um, you can just require a fancy line in your main just to verify that we are indeed uh, running this with no, uh, with no trick. I'm just going to be putting hello. Yeah, this is the main file. And uh, if you look at the, at the readme file for fancy line, it's very comprehensive and it, um, it takes you step by step through the definition of a, a pretty um, a powerful REPL. What we'll do today is we'll wrap all of that goodies into a class. We'll call, we call it a REPL class and we'll make sure we um, make it a bit spicy things up by making this quite general purpose. So initialize, we'll define our initialize method and what we'll do is, what we want is a behavior like if I do REPL.new, we'd like to be able to pass a block, a, a function where, where the, the caller can uh, deal with the input provided by the user and do something with the input. For example, the user might be printing the, the input. So in order to make this possible, we need to define uh, initialize as a function that takes a some sort of block. Uh, 
you can call it block you can call it process uh, and process is a is a uh, proc that goes from string to underscore meaning we don't care what the return type of the of the process block is in this case it's going to be nil because we're just printing something um, and whenever the user initializes uh, a new REPL we want to define a fancy line object the same way it's done here which is great and now that we have a fancy line object we can uh, read the user input and do something whenever we read it you can see that going through the steps uh, on the on the readme we can see a very neat while loop that reads the input from fancy uh, and then runs some sort of instruction based on the input in this case system input will run the input as an operating system command this is not what we want in this instance what we want is we want to make this quite general purpose so what we'll do is we'll run process dot call input meaning we'll take the input and just pass it to the block we um, give to the constructor at initialization time um, and so if this is the case and I run this you can see we have a nice uh, dollar sign for the shell and if I write hello I'm expecting to get back hello myself because this is just uh, some sort of echo um, proc that just prints whatever we uh, whatever we uh, type in so if I type word I get word uh, interestingly enough if I press Control C which is what you would expect uh, to do to get out of this uh, shell we get a pretty uh, unhelpful um, access, uh, st um, stack trace for a fancy line interrupt exception so you can find some instructions on the um, on the tutorial itself but what we want to do is we want to actually handle this exception mind that this is an exception thrown by fancy.readline so we want to put the rescue just outside the while and we'll take this exception of type fancy line interrupt and just put something like shutting down and let's see if this uh, makes a difference also usually when you when you uh, type in rescue you want that to be indented just like so yes that's fine so it's very clear that uh, there's a begin and then a rescue block and that's very uh, very much evident so if i go back for hello and then control c we can see a nice shutting down message uh, which is great because if you go back to our requirement we're now accepting the user input we're printing a command response in this case we're just printing the command back and we're shutting down gracefully how about handling exceptions so whenever you define a pretty complex uh, processing step uh, on on user input you can imagine that this uh, this block right here will be likely throwing exception every every now and then it's important that you define what you want the behavior to be when that happens coming from languages like an interpreters and, and repls like python or ruby or the scala repl you might remember that whenever you get something wrong uh, nothing terrible happened you see an error printed on the screen but then you can that doesn't uh, break or destroy your runtime you can uh, start from scratch uh, uh, rather than starting from scratch you can just keep on typing and get your command right and that's just going to be working fine so the question is what happens if inside our processing block we actually raise an exception saying no uh, let's see what happens I'm going to be typing hello here and then an exception is going to be raised let's see how the REPL reacts to that okay not only a stack trace was printed um, you can see the no here but also the application terminated which is really not what we want we'd like to stay in the REPL and we'd like the error to be handled uh, gracefully now in order to handle this particular error, error we need to be within the, the while loop because we don't want to break the while loop as a result of uh, an exception being thrown by the, by the processing function. So what we'll do is we'll rescue inside here. We'll rescue some sort of exception. We'll be quite uh, forgiving or whatever exception we just um, was just raised, and we'll just put it on, print it on the screen, and say error 
colon and then interpolate the exception itself. Let's see if this looks uh, a bit better. Uh, and now the compiler is complaining that there's a rescue, but there's no begin. Um, whenever you're inside, so you, you, whenever you're inside a function, you can rescue uh, on the on the body of the function, and, that, and that's fine. That's what we did, er did earlier. But if you want to rescue within a smaller block, you have to actually be explicit in specifying a begin that marks the fact that you're uh, rescuing whatever is in this begin rescue uh, block. And also, if we do that, we also need to end the block. So going back, uh, this is what it might look like. And if I write, run this and say hello, this time the exception is actually handled within the, within the while loop. The while loop doesn't break and I can go on and break things again. Nothing, nothing bad happens. Okay, so we figured out how to handle errors. I'm gonna be reverting this to our initial echo function where just where we're just putting back the input itself so if I restart the REPL and I type hello I get hello back which is great and let's focus on the last point uh, in our requirements which is again one that is uh, explained in a lot of detail in the tutorial on the fancy line um, uh, on the fancy line readme so if I scroll down um, you can see there's a an idea of Defining a history file, let's call it history log, somewhere in the in the actually in the current directory, and the idea is if the file exists, then we're going to be reading from it. If it doesn't exist, we'll make sure we actually write it when we uh, when we uh, exit the session, which is uh, better than most uh, REPL actually um, do out of the box. So let's just do that. And also, rather than uh, defining the history file as a as a constant, we'll just pass the history uh, as an argument in uh, uh, when we initialize the REPL itself. So the REPL will be initialized as history and then history is going to be slash history.log and we'll check that. Uh, let me also put it in the current directory. So we do dot current and we can extract this to variable later but let's not focus on that for now yeah that should be it so nothing has changed here we are passing in the uh, history file but we're not reading or writing to it so nothing nothing in particular uh, but now we can actually do what the tutorial says so when we We'll do it in, in the initialization block um, for an initialization function of our REPL. So what we'll do is we'll uh, uh, copy from here and just do if the history file exists, then we read from history. Um, by using the fancy the file api and the fancy history api which is great we don't have to think about it too much if and of course we need fancy to be available so we go here if instead the file is not defined then no problem we're just going to be uh, writing on it once we are out uh, once we are shutting down i can actually make this an unsure so that whenever we are closing our um, our shell, our REPL, we make sure we're actually writing to the history file. Okay, without looking too much into, um, into the, sh the structure of the code, let's see if this works. Uh, fancy might be null at runtime, I think the compiler is complaining about this final fancy. We know that fancy is not going to be nil. Uh, I can actually do uh, so. We can help the compiler, letting them know that uh, letting the compiler know that fancy is never going to be nil. This is because we 
are defining it at the top of our initialize so we'll know well the reason why fancy might be nil at this point is that we might be throwing an, ex an exception at the time when we're before or within the definition of fancy in which case fancy will not be defined uh, but we know the fancy line not new should not throw an exception and if it will throw an exception then it's perfectly fine that our application crashes because something is very wrong um, but in this case we can just help the compiler and say hey don't worry about that i take responsibility for marking this fancy as not nil and just you just save the um the history now if i push the up arrow on the on the REPL, nothing happens but look at this magic so if i do hello world and then control c and get out of the of the REPL, and then i run the REPL again as you can see there's a helpful message here saying hey i'm reading history from from this folder and now if i arrow up there goes the word and if i arrow up again there's go there goes hello I'll tell you more if i control r and go for recursive uh, back search and i start writing w o there comes word not too bad for uh, this number of lines of code and now we have fulfilled our last requirement for the definition of a general purpose REPL 